Vice-Chancellor, I present to you for award of the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa, Professor Sir John Savile. Professor Sir John Savile is an internationally respected clinician and an academic who has made major and sustained research and leadership contributions. These have been to medicine and medical sciences and to the higher education sector. More widely than that, Sir John has undertaken highly influential roles in the national and international science funding and science strategy arenas. A little while ago, Sir John started his career with a BA from St. Catherine's College, Oxford, and went on to graduate in medicine at Sheffield in 1981. Soon after that, he obtained a PhD from the Royal Postgraduate Medicine at Medical School, London, and since then, he has received numerous awards. These include Fellow of the Royal College of Physicians and Fellow of both the Royal Society and the Royal Society of Edinburgh. His long list of awards, including awards recognizing his uh, critical contribution to research, includes a Lifetime Achievement Award for the European Cell Death Association. He has held the Chair of Experimental Medicine at the University of Edinburgh since 2005 and was Vice Principal there and Head of Medicine and Veterinary Medicine between 2002 and 2010. Sir John was appointed Knight Bachelor in 2008 for his services to clinical sciences and then further recognized when the Queen gave assent for him to be appointed Regis Chair um, or Regis Professor of Medical Sciences at the University of Edinburgh. He has a world-recognized research and clinical expertise in inflammation and programmed cell death. And this has been matched by his uh, extensive contribution to research more widely. What has he done? Well, he's had more than a decade of key roles at the Medical Research Council that underpins so much of the research carried out in our medical schools. He has also played key roles in uh, the Research Council's UK and has had two terms as Medical Research Council Chief Executive and Deputy Chair from 2010. More locally, he was also a Scottish Chief Scientist from 2008 to 2010. On an international stage, Sir John has had numerous roles, and these include service on very high-level groups for the European Commission Research Directorate, planning the currently ongoing European Commission research funding program, Horizon 2020, which is an enormous research funding program. Vice-Chancellor. It gives me real pleasure um, to say this in recognition for his exceptional and extensive contribution to his academic discipline and for his sustained service and leadership within the higher education and research sectors, it is my pleasure to invite you to confer on Sir John the degree of Doctor of Science honoris causa. Ego te scientiae doctorum et magistrum constituo creo proclamo renuntio, et in signum caput tuum hoc pilio orno, quod ut Felix Faustumque sit diem optimum maximum precor.
you, you may or may not be relieved to know that this bit's in English, <laughs> not Latin or Doric. Uh, so, Vice Chancellor, Prof Chancellor, colleagues, fellow graduates, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, it's a tremendous honour to be a graduate of the University of Aberdeen. I nearly said Edinburgh, but I got it right, Aberdeen. Uh, and I, I want to commend to you this marvellous collection of graduates over here on my right. Uh, unlike me, getting a degree today, they've all done searching examinations and many of them have paid a fee. So I think we should give them a round of applause. Well done to all of them. Now, this, this great uh, ancient university is the only place I've ever experienced time travel. Uh, some 25 years ago, after a very hard weekend on call in the Queen's Medical Centre in Nottingham, I caught a very early plane to come up to Aberdeen to attend the inaugural professorial lecturer of a friend and colleague. Uh, and he began with a description of the university's first degree in medicine in 1630. Now, I blinked just for a few seconds, I think, uh, and when I was next paying attention, it was 1930. And I'd been transported 300 years in what I thought was a microsecond, real time travel. Whether I actually fell asleep during his lecture, I'm still not sure. But nevertheless, I got this feeling of time travel again, watching all these wonderful graduates here today, because it's 41 years since I got my first degree, and uh, the society was primitive 41 years ago. So, for example, we didn't have mobile telephones. We used to use phone boxes. We didn't have email. We wrote and posted letters. Many of you will be shocked that we didn't have Uber Eats, we had to walk to the chip shop, and no one had ever heard of EasyJet. You had to go to, get to, to a travel agent to get paper plane tickets, but at least one good thing then that was there wasn't a Ryanair in 1978. <laughs> now, things have advanced just as much in my own field of clinical medicine in those 41 years. Life expectancy has increased by 15 years. That means for every year elapsed, people are living five months longer. Childhood leukemia was a death sentence for 80% of children in 1978, and now it's cured in over 80% of cases. And cancer survival more generally has doubled over the same period. Now, all of these advances, whether they're digital, an easy jet ticket, or medical treatment for cancer, they are all the fruit of research and development. And I hope many of today's graduates will go on to a successful, impactful career in research. But productive R&D is but one output from a characteristic that great ancient universities like Aberdeen impart to all their graduates. Uh, and that's the capacity for independent thought. At school, we're taught uh, everything the teachers want us to learn. At university, we learn to think for ourselves. So I'll say to my fellow graduates, use that gift wisely. And if you do, I'm confident that every graduate here will find ways to make the world a better place without being on Love Island, I hope. <laughs> so thank you again uh, to the university. Uh, uh, congratulations again to all the uh, graduates and good luck to everyone in the room. Thank you. But it's always a relief not to mess the ceremony up, isn't it? Well, I, I didn't study in Aberdeen. I studied in Oxford and Sheffield, and it's so long ago I can hardly remember what it was like. Well, as I said, I think that the important thing is that they've all learned to think for themselves, and I hope that they're going to apply that uh, characteristic and change the world for the better.